Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to show you how to take your filter collection a lot further by using smart filters. Now, the cool thing about smart filters is that they use smart objects, and this means you have great flexibility when designing inside of Photoshop. This technology works with Photoshop CS3 or CS4, so if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, you're going to miss out, but hey, watch it and maybe it'll inspire you to take that plunge and go ahead and upgrade. So here we go. You can open up any picture for this lesson. I'm just going to use this particular photo and I'm going to first right click and choose convert to smart object. Now that works great and it's going to take that and tuck it into its own smart object. Let's just call that flower. And we're going to go ahead here and reset our workspace. Let's go to our automation workspace for right now since we're going to be using some filters. That looks good. And we'll twirl that up for a second. Good. Now the cool thing with filters is that you can go ahead and apply them to the smart layer. Now this image is currently 16 bits per channel. So notice that many of the filters are grayed out. If you want to access those, go to image mode and choose 8 bits per channel. When you do that, it converts. Now here's the cool thing. With that layer selected, I could choose layer, Smart Objects, Edit Contents, and that's going to open up the inside. And notice that inside that Smart Object, it's still a 16-bit image. So you're actually preserving that extra color information. Let's go ahead and close that and work on this outside copy here. And we're going to just toss on a filter. Let's experiment with some of our stylization filters here. I'm going to choose Filter, Stylize, Find Edges and this traces the edges of the image. That does a pretty good job. If I double click here on the blending options though, I can actually blend that. So I'm going to tell that to use the color burn mode and click OK. And notice that gave us a really cool sort of cartoon edge-like effect tracing the edges of the details there in the image. Now let's try another filter out. Filter, Stylize, Glowing Edges. Now this loads up the default values and you can play with the settings here, playing with the edge width and how bright it gets. I'm going to actually take the brightness down but punch the width up so it's a little bit thicker and click OK. Notice it runs the filter and by default you're going to get an ugly look here, sort of a black velvet painting. But the cool thing is, is it's fully modifiable. If you want to tweak that filter, just double click on its name and you can actually play with the values here. Let's smooth that out just a little bit more. Click OK. And then double click here on the little up and down arrow and it calls up the blend dialog box. So we could drop that into screen mode for example and lower the opacity a bit. And now we've got a really nice edge effect going on parts of the image. I want to go ahead and further this out a little bit and get sort of a sketchy look here. So let's try some more filters. Filter sketch water paper. Now this is going to go ahead and introduce a nice cool sort of weave pattern. I like that. Let's put a little bit of fiber in there and tone down the contrast a bit. That's looking pretty good. Click OK to run it. And then we can click on that blending option there and actually blend that in a little bit. Just a quick double click on the two double arrows there. We'll call up the blend options. And let's set that to a soft light mode so it mixes in a little bit better. Just about where I want to, completing this illustration look, I'm going to go ahead and do one more pass here with another filter. And this is really how filters work best. When you combine them with subtle values and add their overall presence up to create a new custom effect. Let's go ahead and try filter, artistic, watercolor. And this is going to create a cool effect. Now it makes it look a little bit splotchy like it was an illustration here. You see we have this nice modeled pattern appearing. I'll go ahead and take the shadow intensity up but pull the brush detail down so it's not quite so dramatic. And take the texture down just a little bit or push it back up for that matter. It's really a matter of personal taste. When you're satisfied click OK and it goes ahead and runs that filter. To blend that just click on that little arrow and it'll go ahead and give you the blend options. And let's just mix that in there a little bit. Let's try screen mode. Lower the opacity down. And that's done a nice job of creating the illustration type look I was going for. 
Now the cool thing here with smart filters besides being editable is you could change the stacking order. So if you want to put that water paper effect on last, just drag it to the top of the list and it will run it then as the last filter in the mix. If you also want to do things, you can actually use that layer mask that's attached and just paint with black to hide part of the smart filter. So very, very flexible as you're designing. And if you like it, it's all set. You can go ahead and print or do whatever you need for this. But again, all of these can be turned off. You could restack them, you could rearrange them, double click on the filter to modify it, and it just gives you great flexibility. And that's really the true advantage of smart filters. If you normally use filters, they're destructive. They permanently change the pixels in your image. But by combining it with the smart object technology, you get smart filters. And that just makes it much more flexible. So if you're using Photoshop CS3 or CS4, this is going to open up a whole new workflow for you and really make things a lot faster and a lot easier. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. My name's Rich Harrington. Be sure to check out our resource blog at rastervector.com where you can read reviews about third-party filters and other tools you might want to add on. Thanks for joining us. We've created a custom iPhone and iPod Touch application all about panoramic photography. You can download it to your phone or iPod Touch from the iTunes Store, and it's a complete training experience. You get videos, hands-on files, interactive training, and even an interactive photography guide right on your iPhone or iPod Touch that you take with you so when you're out in the field, you can capture great panoramic photos.